Everybody. Let's see. I need to fix a little something here. There you go. <laughs> All right. My apologies for the tardiness of the start of this. Uh, it's been a real trip trying to get uh, used to all the all the traffic on the road. Gotta love it. It's LA traffic and it's warm and people are going crazy. So in LA, you're either not going at all or you're doing 85 miles an hour. Um, and then you slam on your brakes and you're doing nothing at all. So yeah, anyway, here's your tuning note. Wendy, we didn't have a live session last week, unfortunately. More traffic issues. Took me three hours to get somewhere that normally would take me an hour and 48 minutes. And here's your E. So this is the first session we've had in uh, three weeks, this, I guess it's been. Um, I did put up the, uh, the tutorials for the new uh, tune set. I hope you guys saw that in group in the Irish Trad Slow Session Workshop group. Um, that is the um, uh, the Anderson Reel set, which gives, there's Anderson's Reel, uh, Crowley's number two, the Banshee, and Walsh's Fancy Reels. Um, so those are all they have. Um, the video isn't of me or anything, it just shows the, the music on the screen and a recording of the, of the uh, tunes played by section at a, uh, uh, a medium slow tempo. So you're welcome to check that out. The uh, music notation for these tunes, all of them in fact, that we're going to be doing, the review as well as the workshop portion today, uh, are on the uh, group page. So if you're not a member of the group yet, shame on you, you should be. Uh, just go to Irish, uh, Irish Trad Slow Session Workshop should be referenced in uh, the the Facebook events. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, should also be in that. In, in, I think I linked the uh, the tutorials um, on that page uh, in the event. So look for it there if you can't find it. Uh, searching Facebook, but uh, definitely sign up for that because it's a lot of good information. All announcements uh, go through that page. Uh, the music notations there, and again, sometimes I even. Uh, put some tutorials there. Okay, for those of you who are new, uh, go ahead and say hello to people on chat. I encourage chatting between uh, amongst the uh, the musicians. Um, it's not going to bother me at all because I can hear you, but I can read and I will occasionally look over to this side. When I'm doing that, I'm looking at your chats. Okay, so I'm going to try and stay on top of anything. If you, anything, uh, you know, if I'm playing too fast or too slow, uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, 
all of that is stuff that you can uh, you can ask me uh, uh, through chat. But I want you to say hello to each other. Let uh, let everybody know where you're stream uh, where you're uh, picking up the stream from, what part of the country or which country you're you're uh, you're watching from. And uh, meantime, we're gonna uh, just back to a quick review. We do a, a review for the first hour of the tunes that we did uh, in previous uh, workshops. And then the last hour we spend learning the new tune sets. So um, here we go. We're going to start with Silver Tip Reel, which is paired with the Wise Mate. Both of these are in the key of D. And the Silver Tip is a single reel, uh, whereas the whereas Wise Mate is a double reel. So uh, be aware of that. I'm going to play this uh, medium tempo. So kind of like a slow session tempo. Um, which is still about half of what you would play it in a, uh, a little more than half of what you would play at a regular trad session. Okay, and since you're looking at roughly about 108 to 120 beats per minute, uh, we're going to do it to about 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, about 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and that's how I'm counting each measure. Okay, that's about the tempo we're going to do. All right. Uh, is everybody ready? Hello, yeah, well, Ron. Hello, Ken. Hello, Kim. And of course, Wendy. Uh, do me a favor too. When you have a chance, uh, go ahead and share the stream on your Facebook page. That would be awesome. Let's get some more sessioners in here. Here's the silver tip reel. One, two, ready, go.
so there we have the silver spear. Oh, sorry, silver tip and the wise maid. Okay, how's tempos on that, everybody? Oh, hi, Debbie. <laughs> oh, it says Ron Bingman here. I guess you're on your husband's account. Ah, does he know that you're uh, you're checking out his uh, YouTube history? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, by the way, um, we are being sponsored by um, Cultus Keltori uh, uh, Aaron, CCE, the Los Angeles branch, and uh, actually hosted in Tom McNamara's Irish Import Shop in Hollywood, California. I'm on their stage at the Wren Theater, which is a small theater, but very nice, located in the back of his Irish Import Shop. So, um, right now they are having events, by the way, but they are doing them mostly outdoors um, after everybody in this little area is closed down. They have uh, comedy hours and things like that, so uh, definitely check them out. Um, Ryan? I guess I'm all by myself. Anyway, I'll find out what that website, uh, I think it's theirishimportshop.com, but I need to double check that. Uh, also, if you care to tip, and I do appreciate your tips immensely, there is my, my Venmo, and here is my PayPal. So, pretty much fiddling for you. Uh, if you uh, do paypal.me, it's slash fiddling for you, and that's it. But uh, if you want to just send me a tip uh, as if I'm a friend or a family member, then uh, you would have to actually go in and uh, just use my entire email address, which is fiddlingforyou at AOL.com. All right, let's move on. Set of jigs. This is the frost is all over. The geese in the bog and the uh, Knights of St. Patrick. All right, thank you for the heads up on the tempos. We'll keep them more about where they're at. Um, double jigs, all of these. Double jigs means that you have 16 bars or measures per, per section. Uh, usually it's written out in eight bars or eight measures with a repeat sign. Uh, single uh, jigs, uh, you only have eight bars. There, there'll be no uh, repeats unless they are doing four bars that are exactly the same, in which case they will repeat four bars instead of eight. So uh, there's also some differences between uh, the type of dancing that goes on uh, in uh, between single and double jigs as well as uh, some feels but we're not going to get into that today we've talked about it in as we've learned different jigs throughout the uh, uh, past several months however um, these jigs tend to go about um, 108 to 120 beats per minute so again one one thousand two so be one one two one two one into two into one into two that's typically your dance tempo, okay? So Geese in the Bog will be. All right, so the tempo for this that we're playing today at a medium slow, uh, slow session te uh, tempo would be bum, 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 bum. So we're going like this. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so here we go, right into it. Three jigs. Starting with the frost is all over. All of these are in the key of D major, by the way. One, and uh, ready, go.
the bog.
So that is the process all over. The geese and the bug and the knights of St. Patrick. Okay, let's see. Time for a hornpipe. The one that we're gonna do is I believe the first hornpipe we learned back uh, several months ago when I started doing this workshop. This is the Hills of Terra. And uh, hornpipes are, done, are usually performed at, um, uh, let's see, where's my metronome? Here we go. About 140 to 160. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a taste of what that sounds like. And those would be quarter notes. Three, one, two, one, two, three. So that would probably be at the top end of uh, trad session. Uh, normally though, in, in trad sessions, they will probably hang it up, down a little bit slower, about 140, uh, 150. But we split that in half. Half of 160 is 80. So that's the tempo here. One, two, three. And I think what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to try this out. I'm going to keep the metronome on, and I want you to let me know after we're done with this if you found it helpful or if you thought it was obnoxious and would wish I would stop doing it. So, Hills of Terra, Hornpipe, Key of G, two parts with repeats. We'll do it two times through. One, ready, go. Alright, my bad. I'm gonna start there. Ready? Go. Second time through. 
G. Honey B. metronome off now all right uh, a couple of things about that that current part of the most recent performance there um, that's what happens when uh, your mind goes blank you just kind of uh, uh, that's what I call a brain fart uh, mental falling asleep and I got lost okay what happens when you're doing that in a session um, you can make your apologies like I did and start over if, don't start the whole thing over start close to where you fell asleep as possible or if everybody else is playing along with you you just lay out for a little bit and then come back in when you're comfortable so no need to actually apologize unless of course you're sitting here uh, in a workshop and everybody's looking to you to be the current expert so there you go okay so Kim says she's fine with the metronome, but how how do the rest of you feel about having the re the metronome on? Because if it does, if it is on, it helps keep me honest and steady. But I don't need to have it on if you don't want. So go ahead and give me your uh, your opinion in the comment section, please, as I take us into our next tune set, which is Dennis Murphy's Slide, which goes into the Lonesome Road to Dingle. Now these are like uh, these are kind of like uh, sisters to uh, jig, uh, single jigs and double jigs, except these are instead of uh, feeling in two beats, one and a two and a one and a two and a. What you're getting is uh, a four beat feel, one and a two and a three and a four and a. That's why it's written in twelve eight, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve one. Okay, um, so. Uh, you keep the same basic tempo, uh, so we're going to be doing it at 80. Let's see. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. When it gets obnoxious, I expect somebody, I don't care who it is, that is feeling like it's obnoxious, tell me to turn the metronome off, okay? Can't do it in the middle of a tune set, unfortunately, because I can't keep my eyes over here, pay attention to the chat as well as uh, the live stream and playing. You see what happens when I, my, my mind goes to sleep. You don't want to see what happens when it gets distracted or saturated with too much information. Okay, so the uh, slides tend to have um, eight bars per section. You will either will write them out completely uh, or if, they're, if the first four bars are exactly like the last four bars, they'll put in repeat signs. So if you look at Dennis Murphy's slide here, the notation you'll see there's four bars or measures and those bars and measures are repeated so it gives a total of eight measures per section okay what I want to do is play through each of these two tunes twice and we will go ahead and do it with the metronome again at the same tempo as what we just had here we go one two three and a go Hold on, what am I doing? That's not the tempo that we need to be doing. Somebody stop me. There we go with the distractions and the, and the uh, sleeping upstairs. Okay, what I did was I put it at 80 because that's half of 160, which is your tempo for hornpipes. So, remember what the, the tempo for jigs are? It is 120 is the maximum. So the, metro, the metronome needs to be half of that, which would be 60, not 80. And you guys are going, thank God, that seemed a little bit too fast. Okay, one, two, three, and a go.
lies there for you. Dennis Murphy's and the Lonesome Road to Dangle. Okay, just making sure that we're still all good, all on the same page. Okay, uh, again, reminder, the uh, banner on the bottom of the screen, that's my, uh, my uh, PayPal information if you care to tip me. Um, you could always use Venmo as well if you'd like. That's my Venmo address. Okay. Let's see. Okay, next one. I think this will be the last set that we do um, in the review. So let's do one of the more recent ones, Father Kelly's Reel. And that goes into the Green Fields of America. Couple of double reels in the key of G. Um, and we'll give it a shot. I think on this one, I'm just gonna start the metronome to get the tempo, then I'm gonna turn it off, we'll do it by ear. So, uh, if you remember correctly, the reels are done about 108 so let's do a half of 108, which is 54, correct? That's one way you can do it, okay? 54, that seems a little slow. However, uh, if you remember that reels are counted in, uh, they're in a two beat, they're cut time. So it's two beats uh, per measure and uh, that the uh, beat is a half note. So what we can do is we can go up to 108 which is our session tempo. And instead of uh, considering each beat being a half note, we consider it being a quarter note. So to give you an idea, this Father Kelly's reel with, uh, at the session tempo, where this beat is supposed to be half of a measure or a half note. One, two, one, two. Oh, hello. One, two, ready and go. Okay, but we're gonna do it at half that tempo. So instead of, we're not gonna change the beat, it's gonna stay, stay the same because we're just cutting it in half and how we can do that, instead of counting um, eight, eight, half notes, we're counting quarter notes. One, two, three, four, and one. Okay, so. Now that we have our tempo, we're going to turn off the metronome so it doesn't bother you. And here we go with Father Kelly's in the Green Fields of America. Twice through each. Here we go. One, two, three.
right. That is Father Kelly's reel and the green fields of America. And that concludes pretty much. Let's, do we have time for one more? Ah, let's do one more. Let's do the smash the window set. You just smash the windows, tripping up the stairs, and off she goes. And that should take us up to our, uh, our workshop time. Okay. Everybody still doing good? Okay. Check and chat just to make sure. All right. So, smash the windows. Three jigs. They're all double jigs. Smash the window. Trip it up the stairs. Which, amazingly, I've been... I've, 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 since I've uh, started playing uh, Tripping Up the Stairs um, recently, I've been receiving a lot of requests for it. So, it is very interesting. Um, never heard much of it in uh, in the sessions that I attended, but apparently it's one of those... Uh, one of those tunes that uh, seems to be popular. All right, so double jigs go at about, what do we say, uh, 108 to 120. Let's do 60 beats a minute, which is half of that, and get a tempo. One and a two and a one and a two and a, okay, turn it off. And here we go with Smash the Windows. Each tune play twice through. One and a two and a ready and a go.
I did that twice through or if we did it just once? If I did it just once, my apologies. There we go though, we have smashed the windows, tripping up the stairs and off she goes. That brings us right to the top of the hour, which is perfect timing to do our new tune set. Now, let me just introduce these tunes to you. I'll talk about them and give you a, a taste of what they sound like at uh, session tempos. Anderson's Reel. This is one of the first reels that I learned when I started uh, studying Irish music. It is also one of my favorites. It is a single reel, which means it has eight bars per section. There are no repeats at the end of the eighth bar. Um, the key of D. There is no pickup. We do have some ornaments. We have cuts. We have rolls. And we have bowed triplets. All right. So here is Anderson's Reel at, uh, at Tempo. So that is Anderson's Reel at Tempo. We're going to be learning this section by section and talking about it uh, very carefully as we go through it. Make sure that you understand everything. Now, those of you who do not play the fiddle, uh, any of the ornamentation, the execution of ornaments that, uh, that I am teaching, it all has to do uh, based around uh, what I learned as a fiddler. Uh, whistles uh, and pipes and flutes you're on your own uh, you have your own uh, own ways of doing things so I'll leave that up to you but you'll know where you can put um, these in let's see yeah we still have more time units you're fine okay um so section a of Anderson's reel just going through it measure by measure. Nothing in the first measure, that's uh, difficult. Uh, um, second measure, same thing. Uh, third measure. Now this is where anytime you see a quarter note that's slurred, that's got a slur out of the quarter note into another one, you may put what's called a bowed triplet. For those of you who don't know, that's where you go. Okay, so you can start out the piece because it's got a slur out of that quarter note. Right? I choose not to do ornaments at the beginning or at the end of, um, of musical sentences. And the musical sentence in this case is a section. So start or the end of the section, typically do not put ornaments. As a rule of thumb, and as all of you should know by now, rules of thumb are meant to be broken occasionally. This is not one of those times. I usually start playing Here, I do play, play a bow triplet. At the last measure, we have what's called a cut. We have two Ds that are tied together, an eighth note and a quarter note. The tie means that it's actually one note. If I were to play that last measure without the cut, it would sound like this. Okay, there's no distinction between the two. Might as well just call it a dotted quarter note there, right? No distinction. But if you were to play it without the tie and without the cut, it would sound like this. And that is the essence of the tune right there. That phrase. They want to have that, that feeling of it as two notes, two Ds. So when we tie it, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it with our fourth finger, okay? If we weren't already on the third finger, if we we're doing any other finger but the third, playing that as our main note, we would cut it with the third finger, always. So if we had two A's, time together, cut with the third finger. Two B's, time together, cut with the third finger. 
two C's, tie them together, cut with the third finger. But we're playing the third finger here, so we cut with our fourth. And what that is, it's just, it's a, the barest of taps, right where you would change the bow, okay? Or tongue or take a breath between the two notes, all right? So that gives you that feeling of it being two notes without you changing your bow. So. Okay, it's the barest of touches and you can hear it. It gives the impression that you're playing two notes without actually playing two notes. Okay. And then let's take a look at the, uh, the second line of A. We have the first measure of the second line. It's the same as the first measure. Second line, a second measure of the second line is the same as the second measure. And then it changes, okay? So we don't need to go through measures four or five, which are the, your first two lines of the second line, the first two measures of the second line. What we're gonna do though is start with what's different, which is measure seven and measure eight. Now we have dotted quarter notes here, and as I've said in the past, dotted quarter notes are where you can put a long roll. This would be on the second finger for fiddlers. So the notes that you're gonna play for a long roll is the note itself, two, G2, three, two, one, and then back to G2. Those are the notes you're gonna play for the first long roll. Okay, and uh, as I've mentioned too before, uh, that of course is not the rhythm of it, that's just the notes. G, G, A, G, F sharp, G. The rhythm is, and here's your eighth notes, one and two and three and four and one, one, and two. One and two. So you're gonna hang on to that G just past the and of one. One and, then you're gonna roll the other notes and you're gonna land on the G again on the that next beat, which would be two. One and two. One and two. One and two. All right, second roll that we got in that same measure is with the first finger. We're gonna use uh, our first finger as the starting note, F sharp, as first, three, so one, three, one, open, one. One, three, one, open, one. Okay, the rhythm again is one and two, one, and two. Wait until after the end to start the roll. One and two. Now let's just go back and forth between second finger G and first finger F sharp rolls. One and two. One and two. One and two. One and two. One more time. One and two. One and two. Okay, clear as mud. Moving along, we have uh, the last measure of this musical idea or thought, uh, measure eight of section eight, excuse me. And it has a lot going on. Yes, I am doing a, the bow triplet on the first note. It is a quarter note that is slurred into the next note. So I am going, right? The next three notes are just fine. Then you have a bowed triplet, but it's fingered too. Okay. And that last E is the first note in the B section. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, so let's put uh, measure seven and eight together. One, see, 
one and two and three and go and. Again, ready, go. Two, again, go. Okay, let's do it at a faster tempo. This is probably the most difficult measure in the, in the set, uh, two measures in the section, so spend a little extra time with it. One, two, three, go. Oh, quick tip, by the way. Uh, for long rolls, keep your fingers light on the string. Don't be pressing down really hard, otherwise it won't be as clean. You won't be able to pick the fingers up and put them down again quickly enough. Uh, they'll get sticky and you'll end up missing some notes and it won't sound like a clean roll. So light on the fingertips for rolls. And uh, with the bow triplets, keep everything nice and small right here in the middle of the bow, okay? Okay, here we go, faster tempo. One, two, three, go. Two, again, go. Last time, go. All right, let's put everything in context and play that first idea section A all together. We're going to take it a little slower than that last tempo we just did. So one, two, three, go. Again, ready, go. No bow triplet here. triplet there at the beginning of the second line. Well, we have two phrases, okay, and that those two phrases make the complete sentence for section A, musical sentence, okay? Uh, and it's the beginning of a phrase, and I just don't think that it really lends itself well to play another ornament at the beginning of the phrase. It's not strong enough for me. So, that's personal taste. You may change your mind and say, oh, I want it there. I wouldn't do it, though. Okay. Let's do uh, one uh, one more time with that tempo. One, two, three, and go, and. questions before we go on speak now and speak quickly um, by the way if you uh, if you want to take what I just said about uh, the beginning of the phrase being strong stronger if you don't play an ornament there uh, that's great uh, the thing is uh, when you're doing phrasing and stuff like that you can always you know on a repeat choose to do it a different way so one time really strong and don't play the ornament next time come along you decide hey I want to play the bow triplet good all a matter of taste okay no comments so far so let's move on to section B I'm gonna start with the pickup notes into B and that would be the bow triplet bow triplet here bowed and finger triplet here bow triplet here Another bow triplet and fingered. Same as first measure. And that's exactly the same as the second measure, except you don't have the slur there. Okay? And then we have 
uh, oh my goodness, it looks very similar to measure seven and eight of section eight. Yes, but you have the uh, long rolls. Okay, a little sim a little simpler version of measure eight, but uh, measure seven is exactly the same as measure seven in section A. Okay, so from the beginning of section A, uh, section B with the pickup notes. One, two, three. at that tempo. One, ready, go. section B. Now let's do uh, Anderson's reel in entirety. We're going to do it three times at that tempo and then we're going to pick it up and do it another three times. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. three times at the medium slow. Now let's go at a medium tempo. Da, 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 da. Now, if this is too fast for you, just try and stay with the music. Don't worry about playing it perfect. This is not the time to be thinking about perfection. Just try and get the tune in your head, even if you're just humming it in your head or just follow along as you're reading the notes, okay? One, two, ready, go.
Okay, so that is the entire piece, three times at a medium tempo. That's probably a tempo that would be used in your typical slow session. So, all right, any questions uh, before we move along? I don't see anything here in chat. Okay, by the way, where was that uh, as far as tempos? Let's look at our metronome. We got a tap. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So roughly about 118. I told you uh, reels are done about uh, um, 108 to 120 beats per minute. So we're right in that range. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so that's uh, slow, slow sessions tend to go about half the tempo you'd find in a regular session. Okay, moving on then, since nobody's chatting with me, we are going to do Crowley's number two reel. Um, depending on time, we might not get through all four this week, but uh, I'll give it my, my best shot here. Uh, here's another single reel. Again, single reel means no repeats at the end of eight bars. It's, uh, six, it's eight bars, period, per section. Um, key of D major. Um, no pickups. Looking through here, we've got uh, cuts and bow triplets. Not seeing in, well, I do see in the B section, we have uh, two long rolls. Uh, they're in the second and fifth measure of the B section, and it's they're both on the uh, first finger. In fact, if you take a gander at the um, these two lines that are paired up in each section, you'll find there's a lot of similarities. And the cool thing is, once you learn it once, you don't have to relearn it for the next line. You just have to remember that you know it, okay? All right, so, give you an idea what this sounds like. Here we go at uh, uh, session tempo. Uh, basically at that 117 118 range uh, probably in a tread session you're gonna find a little bit slower closer to 100 beats per minute because there's a lot of string changes that going on in there and um, uh, a lot of players would want to take it a little bit slower um, okay so um, here is if that is the uh, session tempo here is slow session tempo we we'll go one time through with this Section B is going to be very easy because the first and second lines are virtually the same. Okay, a lot of similarities between the first two lines of section A2. Let's dive in. Again, we have a quarter note that has a slur out of it. We could use a bowed triplet here. It's the beginning of a section, so I highly recommend you don't. I go like this. So, no bowed triplet. Cut. You put your third finger down to cut here, barely touch the string to cut. Now this cut is going to go down, tap the string just where you would change the bow if you did not have a, a slur or a tie there. In fact, you can practice that just to get the idea of where the cut goes so you're not a little early or a little late. So play it without the, the slur and without the cut. I'll do it slower. Now with the cut. And 
and you see my finger is just touching and then it releases immediately. You do not need to make a big motion to do it, just touch and release, okay? Okay, so the first two measures will be cut. Here we have a quarter note with that has a slur out of it, and you can, and I do, a bow triplet. Here we have a bowed and finger triplet. Okay, this is an awkward string change for fiddlers because you're going from the G string, which is all the way over here, to the E string, which is all the way on the other side of the violin. How you do that, stick right here, small, you're sticking with your index finger, and then you just drop the wrist, keeping it sticky, all the way around. Okay? You're going to drop that wrist as well as your elbow. So that would be... The key, though, is to keep your bow sticky into the string, not pressing hard, but you're leaning in with that index finger. It keeps it on the string. Okay. So, second line. That's pretty much the same as the first, except you're doing some extra notes instead of playing the quarter notes. So, next measure is the same as the second measure. Bow triplet here. This is the, where, the only place it changes. Uh, it's to end the phrase. Let's do section A then. We're going to do it a couple of times at the slow medium tempo. Ready? Go. Sticky index finger. Good. Bow triplet here. And cut. Okay, let's do it again. Two, three, four. Final time, two, three, go. Cut. Bow triplet. Finger triplet. Cut. Bow triplet. And cut. Let's do it now at a medium tempo. Um, again, if we're doing it at, let's say, just call it at 110. So we need to be about 55 for a slow session. 55 would be where? Oh no, let's just go 110 and we'll count quarter notes. So it would be like this. One, two, ready, go.
So that would be your typical slow session tempo, more or less. All right. Now, what I'd like to do before we go on is let's put these two single reels together in a set, and then we'll add the other two coming up. We're about halfway through, a little over halfway through our workshop a lot of time. So I uh, may not finish the entire four tune set, but at least get these two, Anderson's reel and Crowley's. Now, since the um, our single reels, normally what we do, uh, what I do is I try and do uh, two or three times through each tune. Single reels are about half the length of a of a of a double reel, of course. So, um, if I were to play a double reel t two times, then I would play a single reel four times. That's just a, it's again a however you want. Some people are, no, only three times through, or two times through, and then you move on. Depends on the session you go to. All right. We're gonna do it at that last tempo, that's your regular slow session tempo. 110 beats per minute where the quarter note equals one beat. Hang with me. Anderson's reel into Crowley's number two. One, oh, we're gonna do each tune four times. One, two, three, go.
Okay, so that's the first two in the Anderson's reel set. Okay, we've got about 20 minutes left. Any questions before we move along to the band sheet? Yes, no? Put it in chat if you, uh, if you do have any questions. All right. Now the Banshee and Walsh's fancy reels are double reels. So you have 16 measures per bar, I mean per uh, section. Measures and bars are the same thing. So uh, 16 bars or 16 measures per section. They're written out in this notation as eight bars with a repeat. You know, first and second endings for both sections, okay? The key is one sharp, F sharp, and it is G major in the A section, and it has its relative minor, E minor, in the B section. Okay, I guess we're still doing okay. All right. Now, looking through this, uh, in the first measure, we have a dotted quarter note. And as I said before, we can always put a long roll on a dotted quarter note, but it is the start of a section. Thought, uh, the start of a the beginnings of a musical idea so I like something a little bit stronger I would play either okay uh, or what I normally do is I double it with an open G all right now um, before I go on somebody mentioned this earlier too by the way um, that uh, I should play through this session tempo and uh, slow session tempo so let's try oops wrong one is there what uh, 110 that sounds good so at a real session tempo be like this one we're doing eight uh these beats are half notes one two one two regular session tune same tempo but as quarter notes one two three this is slow session slow session tempo be a slow session tempo it's what you want to get to before you go to a slow session hopefully okay all right now a couple of things in here I'm just gonna go through the a section much slower and talk over what, what, what ornamentations that uh, I do where and when so from the beginning of a we start on the pickup note before one two and three and four <laughs> triplet there. Cut there. Race nose. Bow triplet. Cut.
Okay. So, let's do that again. Same tempo. Two, three, go. One, two, go. the um, session tempo, slow session tempo. One, ready, go. Part. All right, one more time at that tempo. One, two, go. Take a look at section B. Now this is an E minor. Cut. Cut. Long roll. Now the long roll there is one, three, one, open one. One, three, one, open one. One and two. One and two, that's how you practice it. Okay, keep them light. So let's see, second measure of B. Bow triplet. Long roll. Is section A, section B, slow tempo. All right, so we want to do set slow session tempo, which is da, 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 da.
again. One, two, one, ready, go. put the whole thing together. Do it slowly, a couple of times, and then at the ses slow session tempo, a couple of times. One, two, three, four. that start over shall we it's getting long in the day here all right from the top one two go Do it at the faster slow session tempo. One, two, ready? One, two, go. just about time and I'm running out of steam folks so I am going to go ahead and call a halt to today's workshop uh, next week next Saturday four to six we'll do a review from four to from four to five and then from six o'clock we'll pick up uh, Walsh's fancy put the whole thing together as a set um, thanks for your patience with me the last several weeks as I've not been able to uh, get this taken care of for you on a regular basis I am going to try and make sure that things get done on a regular basis. However, with things opening up, I'm probably going to be doing quite a few more uh, gigs on Saturdays. I may not be able to do every Saturday. 
We may have to go to every other. Uh, we'll see. Uh, try and keep as much time open for you sessioners as possible. Uh, any questions before I go, folks? Yay, nay? I haven't seen anything on chat for quite a while. I'm very worried that I bored you and put you to sleep. Oh, no. I got seven people asleep here. It's horrible. Well, we added up to 12 people today, folks. I want to say thank you again. Uh, if you have friends that are interested in the, in the uh, workshop and the slow session that I provide, please encourage them to uh, invite them to uh, join the Irish Tread Slow Session Workshop group. Okay, the group page in Facebook. That's where all of this wonderful information is kept. Uh, the events are are posted there. Any changes in events such as happened in the last couple of weeks, I put them there first. All the music notation is there. Uh, the occasional tutorials, videos, are is there. So, um, by the way, one final thing. I uh, forgot to mention that it took two hours to remember this. Good heavens, I must be tired. Um, I do have a new album out, digital album of all the tunes that we've learned to this point, up until Anderson's Reel. So, if you're interested in using, uh, getting that, it's, uh, it's, um, it's for practice use. I go through each of the tune sets, play them as sets at a slow session tempo. So it's, it actually is about 90 minutes worth of tunes at a slow session tempo speed, every tune played three times. So a lot of work on my part just for you. It does cost money. It's only $9.99. So go to my website, which is uh, fiddlinforyou.com. That's if I, it's fiddling without the G, fiddling, the number four, Y-O-U.com. So www.fiddlinforyou.com. You see how my Venmo there, it says fiddling for you. That's what it is. Put a .com at the end of it and you have my website. Go to the store page and check out the new album. You can preview all of the tracks that are there. You don't have to buy it, but if you do, it'll really make the uh, amount of time that I spent putting uh, put into uh, producing that for you make it worthwhile. So thank you again. Thank you to those of you who are tipping. I do appreciate it. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, Sligo Rags is not performing tomorrow in San Juan Capistrano, for those of you who are expecting that. Uh, not happening. However, Dave Burns is joining me at uh, from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock to play Dropkick Mickeys in San Juan Capistrano. So check out the events if you're interested in that and you happen to be in, in the South OC tomorrow, 6 to 9. All right. God bless. Take it easy. Good night.